Welcome to CoreLogic's housing market update for August 2023. Our national home value index rose by 0.7% in July, marking a fifth consecutive month in the recovery trend to date. Since finding a flaw in February, the national index is up 4.1%, following a 9.1% decline from the record highs in April of 2022. The rise in values in February has recovered about $29,000 from the recent downturn. Nationally, home values are still 5.3% below the April 2022 peak, with only Perth, Adelaide and regional South Australia recording a new cyclical high in dwelling values through July. While housing values are continuing to record a broad-based rise, the rate of growth has lost some momentum over the past two months, slowing from a 1.2% gain in May and a 1.1% rise in June. After leading the upswing, Sydney is now recording the most substantial slowdown in housing growth, with the city's monthly pace of growth in housing values halving from a recent high of 1.8% in May to 0.9% in July. Sydney's also seen a significant rise in the number of fresh listings added to the market, 9.9% higher than the same time last year and 18% above the previous five-year average. An increased flow of new listings provides more choice and may be working to reduce some of the urgency felt among prospective buyers. Brisbane and Adelaide saw the monthly pace of growth accelerate in July, leading the pace of gains across the capitals, with housing values up 1.4% across both cities. Although the trend in new listings has risen in these cities, the number remains well below levels from a year ago and the previous five-year average. Canberra was the only capital city to record a decline in values in July, down 0.1%, while Hobart values were unchanged. Regional housing values continue to lag the capitals, with the combined regionals index rising 0.2% in July, compared with a 0.8% increase across the combined capitals. Every rest of state region recorded a smaller change in dwelling values through July relative to their respective capital city, reflecting milder housing demand across regional Australia as demographic patterns normalise. The largest rise in regional housing values over the three months ending July has been on the Gold Coast at 4%, the southeast region of Tasmania is up 3.1% and the Newcastle Lake Macquarie region is up 3%. On the flip side, the weakest conditions over the rolling quarter were confined to areas of regional Victoria, with Bendigo down 3.7%, followed by Shepparton at minus 2.3%, and the Warrnambool southwest region of Victoria dropping 2.3% as well. The flow of new capital city listings lifted by almost 4% over the four weeks ending July 30th, bucking the usual seasonal trend where new listings would generally be reducing through winter. Most of the capitals have recorded a rise in the number of fresh listings through July, although Sydney was the only city where the flow of new stock to hit the market was higher than a year ago. There may be a few reasons why vendors are becoming more active at a time that's normally seasonally subdued. The flow of new listings has held at below average levels since September last year. With total stock levels still low and selling conditions reasonably strong, it may be the case that more homeowners are picking the current market conditions as a good time to sell, rather than waiting until spring when stock levels might be higher. Another possibility is that we're starting to see signs of motivated selling, as the rapid rate hiking cycle catches up with household balance sheets. Realistically, it's likely to be a combination of both of these factors. Although new listings have trended higher, overall capital city advertised stock levels remain low, tracking 18% below the same time last year and 23% below the previous five-year average. The fact that total stock levels are still trending lower implies demand is keeping up with the increased flow of new listings coming onto the market. Total listings were holding below the previous five-year average across every capital city except Hobart. While total inventory levels are still well below average, national sales were estimated to be 2.2% above the previous five-year average over the rolling quarter. Capital cities have driven the above average level of sales, tracking 5.2% above the five-year benchmark, while regional sales were estimated to be 2.9% below the previous five-year average. The positive inflection in housing values coincides with roughly average levels of buying activity. If we do see the volume of listings increasing further, which is likely as we approach spring, that could take some further heat out of the market, unless that is offset by a more substantial lift in active buyers. Brisbane housing values are up 1.4% in July, adding approximately $10,200 to the median dwelling value. 
Together with Adelaide, this was the fastest pace of monthly gains among the capital cities. Since bottoming out in February, Brisbane housing values are up 4.6%, led by a 5% gain across the unit sector. While most cities have recorded a deceleration in the pace of growth, Brisbane's growth rate stepped up from 1.3% in June. New listings have picked up a little across Brisbane, however the total stock of advertised properties was holding nearly 23% below the same time last year and 41% below the five-year average. Overall, the housing market remains resilient to a double-dip downturn, with housing values continuing to trend higher across most regions of the country. The past two months have seen a reduction in the rate of growth across most regions, but this follows a relatively rapid early recovery trend that was arguably unsustainable given the upwards trajectory of interest rates, low consumer sentiment, and generally cautious lending environment. The trend in advertised stock levels will be a key factor determining housing market outcomes. Very low levels of advertised supply have been vital in keeping a floor under housing prices and supporting a market recovery. With an increase in the flow of fresh listings coming onto the market, we could gradually see the supply side becoming more balanced, especially if housing demand doesn't pick up at the same pace. To date, the rise in new listings has been absorbed, with total stock levels remaining well below average, but this will be a trend to watch. On the demand side, there is evidence that buyers have become more active despite the highest interest rates since 2012 and sentiment levels holding around GFC lows. Housing finance data to June showed the value of home loan commitments has risen since bottoming out in February early this year, up 7.6%. The lift in demand is also supported by higher sales activity, with CoreLogic sales estimates over the past three months slightly above the previous five-year average. With the RBA keeping the cash rate on hold in August and inflation coming in lower than expected for the June quarter, it's looking increasingly like the interest rate cycle is at or near a peak. The June quarter inflation reading was the lowest since September 2021, which should help to lift consumer spirits. With sentiment and housing activity closely related, any rise in consumer sentiment should help to support a further lift in housing activity. However, we don't expect to see a material lift in purchasing activity until a cut in interest rates, which isn't likely until 2024. Even with interest rates potentially stabilizing, borrowers aren't quite out of the woods just yet. The coming months will see more borrowers experiencing the full extent of rate hikes as variable rates follow the cash rate with a lag. Also, the transition of more than 800,000 home loans from very low fixed rate mortgages to variable rates at around 6% or higher is currently moving through a peak. Mortgage arrears are likely to lift through the second half of the year, but from near record lows. The extent to which borrowers fall behind on their mortgage repayments will be dependent on labour market conditions, which are expected to loosen a little, but also how long interest rates remain elevated. But a significant rise in mortgage default is unlikely considering the outlook for labour markets, which are set to loosen. The RBA's latest forecast put the unemployment rate at 4% by the end of the year and 4.25% by mid next year, well below the decade average of 5.4%. Housing demand from strong population growth is set to remain a feature of the market over the coming years, and we're yet to see any material supply response coming through. Also, net overseas migration is expected to hold at above average levels, underpinning housing demand against the backdrop of persistently low dwelling approvals. The latest estimates from NIFIC forecast Australia's housing sector will be undersupplied by around 170,000 dwellings by 2027, which will be another factor supporting housing prices over time. The coming months will be an important period for the housing market. As we approach spring, a higher number of new listings is set to test the depth of housing demand. Additionally, we'll be watchful for any signs of motivated selling or mortgage stress as more borrowers are exposed to the full rate hiking cycle to date. You can keep up to date with all the updates relevant to the housing sector at corelogic.com.au.